Bon appetit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, George. <laughs> okay, we are recording. Okay, so we are recording now. Uh, Bongo is, is with his friends, <laughs> having fun. <laughs> and I don't know, I we should start now or wait a little bit more? Maybe five minutes, something like this. I mean, my idea today is to to finish. Wait, let me. Yeah. So my idea today is to it's a part two of the postulates of quantum mechanics, and I think I finished this because I mean we we need to start like the quantum hardware thing. So I think next Friday. Next Friday is already December, so I think we should start. So uh, I will. I think in the in the in the last lecture, I show like the three first postulates, and now I will, I will present the other three. But I mean, remember that the uh, when we talk about postulates of quantum mechanics, this is this is. There is no uh, uh, a previous accordance about the how many postulates should have and what postulates uh, how it could be like postulates. I mean the, the the thing. So if you look in different books, you see different uh, styles of presentation. I'm using this book here. I mean I'm based the, the the these two lectures are based in this in this book here. And I try like to, to make a summary of the three first chapters and the things I show and also the things that my my colleagues like Maria and and Max show also. I mean the math part. The... So most of the of the things uh, you can find in the three first chapters of this book. Yeah, the point. And uh, the the way they show the the, the postulates. I mean, it's uh, quite similar with how uh, uh, von Neumann showed in the past. I mean, he was the, the first guy who, who showed the postulates. But again, there is disagreements about how should uh, the thing should be postulates and, you know, about quantum mechanics, because there there is uh, there are different interpretations. You would like. So we in the in this course quantum quantum hardware lecture we we are following the the what we call like the copenhagen interpretation of the, the traditional interpretation that is more in more than 90 90 percent of the quantum mechanics books but even for the people uh that agree with the copenhagen interpretation they have different interpretations uh, of copenhagen interpretation so sometimes you can find um, the postulates uh, uh, describing a different way, depending on the book you are reading. But uh, we we can follow this way. So I, today I will finish the the postulates and to present the postulates, and then next Friday we start like the the, the main part of the the course that I'll follow this book about the quantum hardware things. Okay. So I'll follow the new Schoen book, not this uh, coin. This book here we will we will use a lot of, but more as like uh, if you want to review something something else that the, the the new Schwing books is considered that you, you already know. So okay, so let's let's start today. I will start again with an example, given an example, and with this example we can I have some some ideas that uh, will guide us for the different postulates. And I will always like show the postulates and then give some comments after and then. The, the, the other two postulates. Okay. So, and the postulates, they are 
uh, related with the, I think is the spectral decomposition, the reduction of the plane wave and the time evolution that's related with the shading equation. So the example we start, again, all this material was, is in the coin, coin tunnel G book. So we, we start discussing an experiment related with the polarization of light. So uh, we, we start like discussing this optical experiment whose subject is the polarization of light. And this will permit us to introduce the fundamental concepts which concern the measurement and evolution of physical quantities. So the, the, to describe the experiment, what we have is a light beam in the Z direction, like here. And this light beam, it's it polarized in the P direction, in this part. And this P direction has an X component and one Y component. So, uh, in the classical description, uh, the, the, the experiment uh, consists of directing the okay, polarized plane mono, monochromatic light wave onto an analyzer, A. A here is my analyzer. And OZ is the direction of the propagation, and P is the polarization of the light. So uh, in this analyzer A here, it, it transmits, light is transmitted in the X direction. If, if your light is polarized in the, Z, in the X direction, in this direction, with the polarization in this way, so the light will be transmitted. If it, it po is polarized in the Y direction, so the light will be absorbed by this, this, this guy here, this analyzer A. So, so okay. So the analyzer transmit polarized parallel to OX and absorb light polarized parallel to OY. So the class, classical description, the classical description is when we have like an intense light beam. Intense, understand like we have a, a lot of photons at once getting into the, let's say, in the analyzer. So in the flex, in the, sorry? In the classical description of this experiment, uh, is the polarized plane wave is characterized by an electric field of this form. Okay. So this is the electric field. E0 is a constant related with this intensity of light. Ep is the uh, unit vector in the p direction, this direction here, that has a component in the x direction and y direction. And this is the, the, the direction the wave is propagating, it's the Z direction, okay? So E0 is a constant and the light intensity is proportional to E0 squared. Okay, so this is the classical description. Then after the, the passage through the analyzer, so the wave is coming in this direction, if it passes from the analyze it, the part that pass on the analyzer, that's the part, let's say, uh, parallel to the X direction. So after this passage from the analyzer A, the plane wave is polarized along OX, the part that is, is transmitted. So we change like instead of this expression with EP, we have like on E dash, that's proportional with EX now. Okay, the polarization is in the X direction and it propagates in the Z direction. So its intensity I, let's just call it I dash, is proportional to E0 square. And is given by I cos cosine, cosine square. That's the, the Z direction, right? The cosine is this 
this path here. When you have the the, the x direction, sorry. So okay, this is the classical description. In the quantum level, to consider the quantum level, we say that uh, the intensity i is weak enough for the photons to reach the analyzed. So when we say weak enough, we say that the photons uh, get the analyzer like one by one. So it's not once at, it's not several photons at once, but one by one. So this, this means that the, the, the light, the, the intensity is low, is weak, and we are in this, in this case, in the quantum level. So let's, let's uh, place a photon detector behind this analyzer. So let's say a photon detector here. So first of all, we need to remember that the detector never resists a fraction of a photon. So it cannot uh, resist like half a photon. Resist one, two, three, and so on. And the photon crosses the analyzer, or oh, it's entirely absorbed by it. So if it crosses the, anal the analyzer, so it'd be detected. If not, the, if it's absorbed, the detector uh, don't show, does not show anything. So we can cannot predict with certainty with whether a uh, given exit incident photon will pass or be absorbed. We only know the corresponding probabilities. Eh? The probability because in this case the photon, it's uh, it, it sounds like it's in a superposition of x and y. Right. So you have the, what quantum mechanics gives you is the probabilities to be transmitted or absorbed by the analyzer. Depends on the 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 way the uh, the it is polarizing in the x or the y direction. So finally, if we send uh, a large number to recover, like the classical thing, if we send a large number n of photons one after the other, so the result will correspond to the classical law, where about n cos cosine square of theta photons will be detected after the analyzer. So, and if n is big, so we have like high intensity and we recover the, the, the classical result. So, okay, it's similar to this. So let's uh, keep in mind the following ideas now. So the measurement device can give certain results, which we call eigen or proper results. I mean, in general, eigen results, right? Is the, the jargon. In this experiment, there are only two possible results. The photon cross the analyzer or it is stopped by, okay? To each of these eigen results corresponds an uh, angle state. Remember that it, it, this is related with the first postulate in the last, in the last, in the last uh, lecture. And here, the two angle states are characterized by EP equal to EX if the photon is detected, or EP is equal to EY if the photon is absorbed. So if EP is EX, we know with certainty that the photon will traverse the analyzer. And in the other case, it will be stopped. So the correspond correspondence between eigen results and eigen, 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 eigen states is therefore the following. If the particle is before the measurement in one of the eigen states, I mean EX or EY, the results of this measurement is associated with the eigen results that is uh, if detected by the detector or is not detected. So when they state uh, before the measurement is arbitrary, 
only probabilities of, of obtaining the different eigenresults can be predicted. To find these probabilities, one decomposes the state of the particles into a linear combination of the various eigenstates. So, in this case, we have two eigenstates possible, EX and EY. So, the probabilities are related with the cos, cosine of theta, and sin of theta, where theta is the angle between EP and EX, right? Theta is this angle. So, the probability of obtaining a given eigen result is proportional to the square of the absolute value of the coefficient of the corresponding eigen states. In this case, in the, in the x, it's proportional to cos sine square. So this is the case. Then. So, equation three, this equation, each photon has probability cos sine square of traversing the analyzer. It's polarizing the x direction. And sine square, of being absorbed. And the total probability is the sum. That is, uh, is determined by the condition that the sum of all these probabilities must be equal to one, okay? Okay, so in quantum mechanics, we give this type of rule, is called like the principle of spectral decomposition. And related with this principle, we we will develop like the 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 fourth postulate. But before, let's uh, some comments here. Uh, not that there has been an abrupt change in the state of the particles. Okay. So before the measurement, this state was uh, defined by a vector e uh, collinear with e p direction, the p direction. After the measurement, uh, if the if the photon pass from the analyzer, so it's now collinear with the x direction. So this is just an example that express the fact that the measurement disturbs the microscopic system. And if, in this case, the microscopic system is the photon in a fundamental way. So this fourth postulate, e, e postulate is related with the with this with this, this principle of spectral decomposition. Okay. Okay. You know, so far, it, 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 any, any question? No. Okay. So spectral decomposition. I've just uh, when we we talk about this, we will see now. That I will postulate uh, this first postulate will have three different versions because it's related with the the your spectrum being uh, discrete or continuous or your spectrum your state could also be like uh, degenerate or non-degenerate and I will define this in zero. Okay, so the first case. Uh, we will consider like a discrete discrete spectrum, okay? So let's consider a system whose state is characterized at a given time by the cat psi, okay? assumed to be normalized to one. So we want to predict the result of measure a physical quantity, this curved A, associated with the observable a cat or a this prediction is of a probabilistic probabilistic sort so we are not going to go to give the rules that allow us allow us to calculate the probability of obtaining any given a gain value of a of the the observable a so let's assume first that the spectrum of A is discrete. But A could be like uh, something like energy angular momentum is an uh, example of discrete spectrum. So if all the eigenvalues A and small a n of uh, big A are non-degenerate, 
there is associated with each of them a unique uh, to within a constant factor eigenvector un. So uh, let's just let me write here what I mean by this. So uh, what I'm telling you is just like we have a u n a n u n so this is the non-degenerate case it's discrete right because the n n could be one two three but it's non-degenerate in the sense that a applied with the cat u1 you give me one observable on a again value a1 a applied to this other again cat a2 you give me the again value okay so this is the non-degenerate phase okay okay so just this equation four i just write uh show that day. and of course n could be three four and so on but associated with each again vector is one again value a for this operator. So since a is uh, an observable, the set of u n, the cat u n, is normalized. So it constitutes constitutes a basis in the uh, last lecture we defined this e curve here as the Hilbert space, right? So it con constitutes a basis in the Hilbert space. And the set and the cat psi can be written as a linear combination of the U's. Okay. So uh, we postulate that the probability, like this P here, P curve, of finding A N when A curved is measured is proportional to the coefficient cm. This is easy to see, right? So we just need to multiply this by un. You multiply this by un. Un is normalized, so you multiply it by the bra here. Bra here, so if you model the square, you only have this, this guy square. So, we have the fourth postulate in the version for a discrete and non-degenerate spectrum that is given this way. When the physical quantity A, A curved, is measured on the system in the normalized state cat psi, the probability P of AN of obtaining the non-degenerate eigenvalue AN of the corresponding Correspond the observable A is this. Right? That's exactly this way. Where U N, the cat U N, is normalized, is, is, a, is the normalized again vector of A associated with the again value A. Again. Okay? So, but uh, in, a, in another case, we could have like that the eigenvalues a n could be like degenerate. Uh, this uh, happens when several orthonormalized eigenvectors, the cat u n, and I, here I put an extra in this index i, correspond to them. Where this i here could be one, two. Gn. This Gn here is called the, the, the degree of the degen degeneracy. So uh, the difference 
Well, they don't degenerate gaze. The difference. So, and this could be K, U, and I. A N U N I. So let's say that the uh, that G N is equal to two. This meaning like the degeneracy degrees is equal to two. So I is one and two. So in this case, A applied to the cat u1 one, one we'll have a gain value a1 but when a is applied to this different cat a1 2 i would have a1 u1 Okay, so I have the same again value for two different cats. So in this case, we degenerate. Okay. And of course, uh, this I could be one, two, three, four, and depends on the GN, the degrees of the degeneracy. Okay, and the same for when n is two. I mean, we will have like two possibilities. So that's why we have these other, these other version for postlate four. So this is the first case. So okay, we are here. So if now some of the eigenvalues a n are degenerate, several autonormalized eigenvectors corresponding to them. So we can write instead write this way, this way here. We write in this way, where i is extra index is one two and two g n. And psi can still be expanded in the orthonormal basis, now the cat un. So now psi is expanding this way. So we have this extra sum here, the difference from the, the generate and non-degenerate case. Here's the non-degenerate and here's the generate case. So in this case, the probability p of obtaining a n becomes this. So again, it's just multiply this by the bra u n. U n i is normalized, auto normalized in vectors. So we obtain this c n i. Okay. So equation six, six, and this one. Uh, is then seen as a special case of equation A. Yeah, so when the degree of degeneracy is one, uh, in other words, it's not degenerated, so equation eight will become equation six, okay? Which can therefore be considered the general formula. So this could be like the general formula, equation eight. So we can again like uh, postulate the fourth postulate, like update and the case of discrete spectrum. Uh, when the physical quantity, uh, the curved A, is measured in the system, the normalized state cat psi, the probability of obtaining a n, the eigenvalue a n of the corresponding observable A is now this, which is 
this guy here, the friction rate. Where Gn is the degree of the de degeneracy of An. And uh, the set Uni is given by should have a, a cat here, okay? Forget the cat. Should have a cat here in this UN. Is the orthonormal set of eigenvectors which form a basis in the eigenspace EN, the Hilbert space, associated with the eigenvalue A small a and of a. Okay, so let's make some comments about this. For this postulate to make sense, it's necessary that uh, the eigenvalue a n is degenerate. If the eigenvalue a n is degenerate, the probability p of obtaining a n must be independent of the choice of the the cat's U and I, bases in the EN. Uh, to verify this, uh, consider the vector psi n as the sum of the, the, the degeneracies in this way, where the coefficients C and I are the same as those appearing in the expansion of equation 7. And equation 7 this. So what I'm just saying is that the psi is the sum of n of the psi n. Okay. So uh, psi n is part of psi, which belongs to E n. That is the projection of psi onto the subspace E n. So psi n is P n psi, where P n here, this P n here, is defined in this way is the project of operator onto the cyan. So uh, this operator uh, it projects psi in the in psi n. Okay. So from this expression, it's clear that a change in the basis in EN does not affect the probability. So this probability is written, uh, could be written this way. Once psi is defined in this way here, and the probability, remember, the probability is this here, modulus is square. So we will have like this, uh, this is this bra and one cat together, right? So that's exactly the projection. So the probability is written, could be written in this way. Okay. Once we have used the fact that P uh, dagger is equal to Pn, the project, so it's really easy to see them because you just need to like to, like to flip this operator here and it's the same. So P dagger is equal to Pn. So it's Hermitian and that it's a projector. P square is equal to Pn. Because when we multiply P square here, e and Un is uh, normalized, so we have like the bra and the cat together. That will give like uh, identity. Okay. I mean, I, I think this would be like a, a nice homework. Try to, to show like this. And the probability, this probability here would be written in terms of this guy here. Where this guy here, this P here is the, the projector is defined in this way. So uh, let's assume that the step of, oh, okay. So this is uh, just to show like that, yes, we can like project the, 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 Psi state on a psi n state. Okay, so this we finish here this part. So now uh, we are all, always considered like the discrete discrete spectrum. 
we could consider like the case of continuous spectrum. No, uh, and the the the, the conclusion will be uh, almost the same. The same steps we can do. Now let's assume that the spectrum of A is continuous and non-degenerate. That it could be generalized to degenerate case for A as well. But uh, yeah, let's say uh, one example. This uh, a continuous spectrum could be the position of the particle. The position of the particle is continuous. And we don't have like a quantum of space, not 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 in the at least not in this level. Right? When we talk about uh, quantum of space, in general, we are related with some theories of quantum gravity, but it's not the case here. I mean, so for quantum mechanics, the space is still continuous. So uh, the system orthonormal in the extended se sense of eigenvectors that's defined like in the uh, continuous spectrum. Let's define the eigenvectors as V, V of alpha. So it's this way. So A applied to V of alpha, the eigenvalues alpha, V of alpha. So this forms a continuous basis in the Hilbert space in terms of the Psi. That in this case can be expanded in, instead of the sum, can be expanded in terms of an integral. I think we should not have this alpha here. Integral the alpha get the alpha. Okay. So since the possible results of the measurement A forms a continuous set. Okay. That's why you have the this integral. So we must define a probability density just as we did for the interpretation of the wave function of a particle. And just to remember here, uh, in accordance with the, the Broglie hypothesis, we might apply the ideas of a particle wavelength this way in terms of the, the, the models of the momentum or the wave number. And edge here is the term constant. We could apply this to all material particles. So uh, we must substitute the classical concept of a trajectory by the quantum state of a particle, such as an electron, is characterized by a wave function psi. So if you really want like to to find, let's say, the position of this uh, such a electron. Uh, the possible positions of the particles form a continuum. And the probability is defined in this way. Let's see here is a constant, psi square, and this is the uh, volume element, the tree, the tree R. In our case, the probability, the P of obtaining alpha, Uh, of obtain alpha included in a value between alpha and alpha the alpha is given in this way. With whole alpha, uh, this model is the square of C. So we have a uh, model is the square of C, that's the cat of uh, V psi. Okay, so the same, the same proced proced procedure. So we could like uh, for the the case of uh, continuous spectrum, uh, the physical quantity A is measured on the system in the normalized state psi, and the probability dP of obtaining alpha, and alpha is included uh, in between alpha and alpha plus the alpha is equal to this. So very similar, right? With the the case of the case of uh, discrete case. 
So this V alpha here, this cat here, is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue alpha of the observable A associated with the physical quantity A curved A. So, okay, uh, our homework here is since psi is normalized and verify that each of the cases considered above has a total probability equal to one. So it's a simple one because uh, psi in V alpha, V alpha is normalized. So it's simple to show this. So uh, a consequence from this, uh, consider, uh, let's say, two cats, one psi, one psi dash, such that uh, psi dash, uh, the difference is, just, is only a phase uh, related with psi. So if psi is normalized, the same for psi dash, okay? Because the remember the the bra psi bra this sign here will be just a minus here. So this is the the exponential cancel, and we have one. So the probabilities predicted for an arbitrary measurement are the same for psi, the cat psi, and the cat psi dash, since for any u and psi when u and Cat, we have this thing here. Okay? Because this is the, this, I think I forgot a, a dash here. Okay, UN, Psi dash, and then you appear this exponential, and this, and this. So this phase will not change the probability. That's the that's the conclusion. Similarly, we can replace psi by a psi two dash by this way without changing any of the physical results. The only thing we need to know that now, because of this constant here, should appear something like this just to cancel the alpha square factor okay in this case here okay so this is if if you have an extra factor here so if this alpha is not uh, equal to one so the probability must be uh, equal to one because the idea is uh, when you have an experiment the probability to measure something is one once you have one you make like one experiment so that's why we normalize so if this alpha is not equal to one so we could normalize it by just dividing by the size and this extra alpha square will cancel Okay, and another thing is uh, when we have like state vectors that represent the physical, the same physical state, the like two state vectors that represent the same physical state. So we must be care uh, when we need to interpret the, 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 the result correctly. For example, let's assume a psi is given this way. So psi is lambda one, psi one, lambda two, cat psi two, where lambda one and lambda two are complex numbers. So it's true that uh, when I apply one phase in psi one, so exponential i theta one, represents for all theta one, the same physical state as psi one. So, because the, the first example is like just this phase will not change the, the, the probabilities to, for this physical state. 
So the same uh, side two, if I add one extra phase that called theta two, represent the same physical state as the cat side two. But in general, the sum of them does not de describe the same state because uh, when you uh, evaluating the probabilities, we need this is square and we'll have this term here. That's a term of interference between the theta one and theta two. So uh, the probability will have the probability of this guy here plus the probability of this guy here, okay, but there is one term of interference. The only exceptions is when the theta, in this case, theta one and theta two are relating this way. So when, if n is zero, so theta one is equal to theta two, so it's easy to show that this, this guy here will go out. And we have like the probability is the sum of the two states. But uh, for other cases that's not related with this, so so the this is not this is not true. It's not just this this sum. No. The physical states are different. So this is a homework. It's simple to show. Okay. Okay, so uh, these are the, the case, like the postulates for the, when we are related with the, the composition that we call spectral decomposition for the, the case considering, I mean, the, the generate continuous, discrete, the generate and non-degenerate phase. The, the, the same thing could be, it's similar, the conclusion, right? So another thing is related with the with packet. Remember in the last lecture we talked a little bit about. So let's remember something. But now it's related with the example in the in the beginning that we, we saw today. So uh, uh, you, you guys have any questions about this? No. Okay. So, uh, reduction of the wave packet. We have introduced the concept of wave packet reduction in the example of the measurement of polar polarization of photons. We are not going to generalize it, consider the case of a discrete spectrum. So, assume that we want to measure at a given time the physical quantity A. If the cat psi which represents the state of the system immediately before the measurement is known, the fourth postulate allow us to predict the probabilities of obtaining the various possible results. Okay. But when the measurement is actually performed, it is obvious that only one of these possible results is obtained. Okay, so before the measurement, we have the probabilities and after the measurement we have one of these possible results so immediately after this measurement we cannot speak about the probability of have obtained this or that value since we know which one was obtained So immediately after this measurement, we cannot speak about the probability of having obtained this or that value, since we don't know eh, which one was obtained. I think there's a typo here. So with this additional information, it is understandable that the state of the system after the measurement should be different from Psi. So let us first consider the case where the measurement of A yields a simple eigenvalue AN of the observable A. So we postulate that the state of the system immediately after this measurement 
is the eigenvector u, the cat un, associated with a n. So if I have uh, the state psi, uh, after the, me the measurement, I obtain one eigenvalue a n, and the psi becomes u n. OK? So when the eigenvalue a n given by the measurement is the generate, we can generalize this equation as follows. So if the expansion of the psi immediately before the measurement is written in this way, that's the fourth postulate, right? For the generate case, discrete and the generate. The modification of the state vector due to the measurement is written now in this way. Okay, where this sum here is the vector of psi n defined in equation 9. That is the projection of psi onto the eigen superspace associated with a n. Let's see here equation 9. And this psi n. Okay. So, okay, so where well, this guy here is the vector psi n defining equation nine, that's the post fourth postulate. That is the projector of psi onto the eigen subspace associated with a n. So if you, we use the projector operator pn, so psi n is pn psi, that is given by this. We just use the definition of the this part here, the definition of the P. So it's easy to show that psi after the measurement a n will see, will give this. So this is another homework that is basically show that this guy here, same as this guy here, using the definition of P. So with this, we can postulate, like the fifth postulate, I forgot to put here. This is the fifth postulate. Not the typo. If the measurement of the quantity A on the system in the state Psi, cap Psi, give the result a n, the state of the system immediately after the measurement is the normalized projector, this here, which is this guy here, of psi onto the eigen subspace associated with a n. Okay, so just a comment here, the state of the system immediately after the measurement is uh, always an eigenvector of A with the eigenvalue A n. So we stress the fact that it's not an arbitrary cat of the subspace A e n, but part of Psi, which belongs of E n. Okay, this equation here, Psi, uh, going to un can be seen as a special case of this. C n i u n i. So when g n is equal to one, so the degeneracy, the, the case is degenerate is non-degenerate. So the summation of i disappears, and we have only this guy. Here. Okay, that is will be. Plus or minus one, right? So this cat indeed describes the same physical state as UN. So this guy here, Psi. Okay, just a comment on the fifth postulate. So in the sixth postulate is related with the time evolution, and we 
talk a lot uh, about the Schrodinger equation. So we already, already presented the Schrodinger equation for a particle. But I think in the in the last the last lecture, and also when I was talking about the the quantum mechanics overview. Now we will write it in the general case. So this is a, a postulate related with the time evolution. So the sixth postulate is the time evolution of the state vector, the psi of t, is governed by the Schrodinger equation in this way. Okay, where this h of t is called the Hamiltonian operator of the system. And it, it is observable as the observable associated with the total energy of the system. So, okay, guys, this is the postulates. I put here in the end a brief summary. Uh, consider the case the last week, the three cases in the last week, and today, just we to remember the six postulates. Yeah. So uh, I think the first postulate in the last week we considered was something like this. Any state of the quantum system at a time t0 is characterized by a vector, cat in this case, psi of t0, that belongs to the Hilbert space. This vector in the Hilbert space describes completely the physical state of the system. So everything that can be said about the system is contained in Psi. Even we cannot measure the Psi directly, but we can measure the consequence of Psi, like the probabilities of the field. So uh, the, this was like the first postulate. The second, every measurable physical quantity is decri described by a self-adjoint operator uh, called observable. Uh, acting in the Hilbert space of the system. And this was the second. The third, also in last week, was the only possible results of a measurement of a physical. Quantity. Uh, the probability of finding one of the eigenvalues, for example, an associated with the observed quantity, is given by, in the case of discrete case, we forget the sum here of n, is given by this probability here. Okay, in terms of the psi and u, this is the degenerate case, or could be given also in terms of the p the projector, where Pn is the projector over the eigen subspace space of the Hilbert space with eigen value An. And the cat U and I is one of the eigen states with this eigen value with the degeneracy Gn. The fifth that we also just saw, like after a measurement, generating the eigenvalue an, the state of the system collapses to this. It's relative to the collapse of the wave function. Okay, where p again is the projector. And the last, the sixth, is the evolution of the state vector while no experiments are carried out is governed by the Schrodinger equation. This equation here where h of t is the Hamiltonian operator of the system. We should have h of t here. Also, we, I, I didn't say, but this is equivalent to what we call like the Heisenberg description. We used in, during the AUKUS, the Schrodinger equation most of the time. But just to, to know that this, this guy here is equivalent with this description here. That is the Heisenberg description the difference is the observable A varies with time using an equation like that. The quantum state, like the psi, 
remains always constant. But it, 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 these two equations are equivalent. Sometimes it's um, much appropriate using this one because we make the things simple. Sometimes it's, this one's better, but I think in the course, when we talk about quantum hardware, we use more this description here, the sharing equation. So, okay, in fact, even in like in the, in the, in this book, in the coin book, like uh, we have other uh, postulates when he, he will talk about the, the spin. So there is an extra postulate related with the, with this spin that is related with the angular momentum. But uh, uh, we, we, we don't need to, 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 to have these things here. In even uh, this extra postulate, uh, it, it disappears when we talk, when we consider like the state of the Schrodinger equation, we consider a more general equation that's the Dirac equation. The, the spin is like included. And it also is a relativistic equation. The, the special relativity in the case of Dirac equation is, is, is valid and is included. Uh, okay. Okay, so um, we have questions. Yeah. I think I'm done today. Okay. I have a question in the uh, continuous case. If you have a degeneracy in the continuous case, is the uh, Eigen space finite dimensional or infinite dimensional in the degenerate continuous case? So, in this case, let's see. Okay. So, if we have, in principle, it could be. So, if it is continuous and degenerate, right? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah, it could be infinite, I think. Oh, okay. In principle, in principle, I think so. But I don't know, I mean, one example, maybe if some physical examples. In fact, I mean, the first example I see is like the position. So the position, you you not have the degeneracy, right? Because okay. you will find the particle in one place, you cannot find in two different places. Mm, okay. We, we need to see that in this case, because in the case of energy, okay, you can have the same energy to two different states. But this right. is discrete. But the case of continuum, at least the example I, in my mind now, is the position. The position is in continuum spectrum, but you can never find the path in two different places, I mean, not measure in two different places, right? So, so it's so yeah, I'm gonna try to, to see one example. So, so like the, the generacy for for continuous cases, but to I, I think like in the math point of view, I think you can. But I try to see a physical example. Uh, okay, yes. So sorry, I was asking in the mathematical sense. Yeah, yeah I, I think mathematical sense it means there is no no problem. So then you would have in place of equation eight with the double sum, you would have a double integral. Yeah, I mean. No, but because the degeneracy is, I think you have a sum, one integral and a sum, I think, because the degeneracy is not continuous, right? I okay, think. yeah, that, that, that was my, that was my question with yeah. the degeneracy could be continuous. Oh, no, I don't think, yeah. Uh, okay, that, yeah, that, that makes it much simpler then, thank you. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, questions? Baron and Bob. So, okay, I mean, we, in the next, uh, in the next Friday, I will start like talking about the quantum hardware thing because I mean, we still need something, something more about quantum mechanics, but I mean, we'll do this during, during the course because we need to I mean, really start, you know, we start like the, the description. And I think something, some doubts probably when we have some examples, solving some examples, uh, the things here will be much, much clearer. And I think also I will change a little bit the the way of presenta presentation. I will use more the whiteboard, okay? Because sometimes you need to make some long calculations, and in the in the slides is not is not is not appropriate. It's better it's better use the whiteboard. And uh, another like announcement is like we and Bumble, uh, uh, me and Bumble, we are uh, like considered to have one a different. It's not a, I don't say a course, but let's say a course. Um, that the idea is to discuss a little bit more, more these ideas of. Uh, I I don't want to say like the philosophical of quantum mechanics because I think it's too potentials, I'm not a philosopher, but I mean, to discuss a little bit more, let's say the postulates, let's discuss a little bit more the postulates, try to understand a, a little bit more. So, but this is not part of the quantum hardware course. The quantum hardware course will be like, oh, let's do the calculations and okay, like the, is the Copenhagen interpretation and let's do the, what we need to do without discussing uh, the let's say philosophy of quantum mechanics, but we are planning like to to have this other thing because I think it's important even like to 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 us that interested in quantum computing because like quantum computing is a new thing and maybe uh, uh, different uh, because the idea is to to discuss different interpretations. As I said, we have the Copenhagen interpretation, but we have much more interpretations. And in the future, we'll try like step by step. Try to let let's say first let's discuss a little bit more about the Copenhagen interpretation to understand it much more. And then we try to see like how one experiment in Copenhagen interpretation is interpreted in different uh, in different other interpretations. Because I think in the future this will be important when we have like uh, this quantum computing and quantum communication things in general. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's time to we to us everyone like to understand much better the quantum mechanics. We understand like the math. We know how to make the calculations and all these things. It's okay. Uh, so far till today, all the the the, the quantum mechanics is like never fail I mean, at part like the quantizing gravity, but this is another thing. But all, all the time, all, all the time that you try to do something in experiments using experiment, quantum mechanics will always succeed. But maybe in the future, quantum computers could give, uh, I don't know, different, different um, ways that you could like differentiate one interpretation from another. And that's why, like me and Bombardi was talking, maybe it would be nice, like to have apart from the quantum hardware thing, uh, this quantum discussion, something like this. But uh, I think in December, somewhere in December, I will have like one. Oh, Bombardi is back. I'm talking about uh, hi Bombardi. I'm talking about like the our ideas for the. We give that name, but so far it's a funny name, like quantum team discussion. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm talking about this. We will have these ideas in the, in the future to have the more like philosophical discussions about quantum mechanics. I mean, when I say philosophical, I will 
try always to use the math because I understand the things better if I have the math, at least for me. <laughs> I think helps, math helps. But if people that don't like the math, but don't understand it well, but want to participate, people that have seen the YouTube, for instance, like they're welcome because Okay, if you don't understand the math, okay, but we I'll always try to give uh, a meaning what we are doing and what meaning uh, uh, the results gives and uh, alternatives for this. I mean, this is the idea. So I think in, I, we still didn't decide uh, me and Bobo day when we start, but someday in December before the, the Christmas, we have at least one 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 lecture that i'll show here and, and try to give the idea what uh, what what we try to plan to do this but it's a different i don't want to call a course but it's a different uh from the quantum hardware course quantum hardware course was one thing and this other thing will be like a discussion but i always try like to give bring something and we discussion like like Baron, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's the old adage, uh, shut up and calculate. So, I mean, obviously, yeah. a little bit nervous about philosophical interpretations because um, I think the problem is that it's very hard to use human language to encapsulate and understand mathematical concepts and it'd be a kind of reaching limits. And but that's what we are trying to do when we sort of uh, look for a philosophical interpretation. So I think there might be limits as well. So it's, um, but it will be interesting, certainly. But I mean, mm -hmm. for example, the many body, well, I mean, the, is it the um, mild sort of the, this idea that there could be parallel universe is probably not very useful. Um, most of all, it's not a testable hypothesis, which is quite useful if you have that. So you probably will agree as a physicist that any idea you have has to be testable somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But, there, but there is maybe there is other interpretations that, um, as, uh, as far as I know, there is no, no interpretation that you give us like in different ways. So all the interpretation gives like the same. But I mean, my hope is with this new a lab that's the quantum computer you know these all these things that are uh, developing maybe in the future this could i don't know maybe it's a naive uh, i'm being naive but maybe in the future we could have like different not main worlds i think main worlds as you said uh, there is no no way to test i think but there is other interpretations that at least we could like talk about a little bit about and maybe someone could have like some idea how to maybe test in the future, in the future um, computing. Bob, uh, I think you can just... Hang on. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Good. Uh, you mentioned that the passports that you just presented uh, came from a certain source and they could be different in other sources. Um, is, are they different in the sense that they're basically the same thing, just written differently or format differently, or are they different in the sense that they're actually different postures? Yeah, I'm not sure if I understand your the question because the at least my audio not. Could you repeat to me a little bit? Yeah, um, you had mentioned that the the passage you, you was presented. I mean, you one of my slides you you are talking about. No, so it's a very general question. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Uh, early in the talk, you mentioned that uh, the possible you were presenting came from a certain specific uh, reference source, right? And it, they might vary. If we look at the possible current mechanics in a different source, we might find something different. Um, are those? Is the difference simply in the way they're stated and formatted, or are there, ref are there different sets of postulates out there for quantum mechanics? Yeah, I mean, so if you, if one of your George or Baron you understood, 
to repeat, Bob. Sorry, Bob, I'm not. No uh, problem. If I could, I th I'm speaking just in the sense of mathematics, not in physics. You can have different different sets of postulates for the same mathematical system but they have to be proved to be equivalent so okay. for so for instance you could define the real numbers or the integers or any mathematical thing given different axioms but then you you need to show that these axioms define the same system so so i think that in the case of quantum mechanics, I'm sure that the diff different authors want to describe the same system so that in some mathematical sense, any result of axiom set A should also be the same result in axiom set B. That's, that's my interpretation. Okay. Um, is it generally agreed then that this set is the set? And yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give a, 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 a deeper example from math. You can have different axioms for set theory. Right. And that, that won't change what the results are that you actually use from set theory. Okay. I think that's right also with, the, with this. Um, so, Carlos, I think Bob is asking because you mentioned in some of the... Um, in one of the sections that there are uh, different uh, postulates. Uh, some uh, books have more postulates, others are. But in the end, I think, Bob, uh, correct me, Carlos, is um, the actual calculations, the actual framework still the same? The same thing. It's just, uh, you know, some, some other people add more extra postulates. But in the end, in terms of actually how the framework works, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So they have like let's say different ways to to, to get the same results or something like this. Great. Okay, thanks. So that helps a lot. Uh appreciate that. Nice. So sorry, I but I, I couldn't understand the story very well. Sorry. Well, this is the beauty of the, the whole subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, this uh, ability of uh, having a, a broader, you know, from um, and uh, this is also partly also uh, this is one of the reasons also the uh, we want to do this thing about the interpretation um what does all these things mean i mean from a mathematical point of view you know the framework is specific you know the you can whatever number of axioms you come up with and these things you know physicists will take those uh, the the axioms that you stated and they will conduct experiments and this and they should arrive to the same conclusion as um the same conclusion as if someone else have given you um um, uh, a different version of the postulates, <laughs> or added an extra postulate. So the 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 um, the underlying framework will still, from a mathematical point of view, will still be the same. The results, anyway, the the stuff that you want to do. Yeah, and one one good thing is also another homework. And maybe you try to read this the postulates in this book because it's different from the ones I I show. Because this is the, like. I understand like the postulate that is related with the quantum information so uh, the authors like consider that make a different way from the from the traditional like quantum mechanics books but it's also like the the Copenhagen interpretation that is in, in the synchron book uh, your audio we, we could maybe do the exercise take the uh Nielsen and Schwang postulates and compare them to the Cohen. I forget his name. I mean, it's a good homework. Yeah, just compare. But, but my sense is that there would be different models of the same system. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I'll put it in the uh, Zulip. I found a free online copy of the uh, text of the second textbook the Niel nielsen the schwang thing. no yeah, the, I... the the cohen the nielsen oh. schwang i had to shell out some money for 
the, I, I have the PDF if you okay. guys want. I can share. I have the PDF. Yeah. But the, yeah, the uh, let me see if I can get the name right. The uh, Cohen Tamuji. I yeah. found the on on archive.org. There's a copy of it. Yeah, there is, there are two volumes. This is the first one. There's a second. I th yeah, I think it's all all the volumes are in in one giant PDF. I I, I uh, it's not it's not uh, it, it say it is, but it's not. Is no. in the book like in this book? If you see the index, it has the 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 index for the both volumes. But there is, I have the other book. It's not okay. Yet, but you need to, to download the second. The second. I mean, we use more the things from the first. When I use something, I use a lot of things uh, in the quantum hardware book. A lot of things that we need to complement complement this one because it it's considered that you already know. Because yeah. it's considered that you the guys like have the the quantum mechanics course and already know a lot of things. But I will I will show the the things and I I say the oh this yeah is no the what I found on I'll, I'll put it put this in the chat is is like uh, twenty four hundred pages. So I assume that it's all three volumes. The coin. Yeah, let me put that in the chat. I'll, and I'll put it on the Zulip too for everybody who isn't attending. Yeah, because this first volume, at least the first, let's see. 